Astronomers from Arizona State University recently shared some of the first images from NASA's James Webb Telescope. Stunning! They're full of galaxies and nebulae that existed before the birth of the galaxy we call home. Let's look deeper into the telescope's latest findings and more, starting with Webb's latest images. Using its latest data and images, researchers could find a light that was emitted by the bright white elliptical galaxy through the huge spiraling galaxy in front of it. This allowed them to identify how interstellar dust affected different parts of space. Interdisciplinary scientist Webb and Regents professor at ASU, Roger Windhurst and his team researched the data from the images taken in the PEARLS project. PEARLS, of course, stands for Prime Extragalactic Areas for Reionization and Lensing Science. Winters said that this is one of those unique opportunities they've gotten to measure the amount of dust produced in different galaxies, similar to ours, and even by older stars. Keep in mind that this is the same dust that newer planets, stars, and even people are formed of. Scientists can now figure out how star formation occurs in different galaxies, from gas and dust that formed in the past. While most of the light came from Webb, they still had to pull up images from Hubble for some additional blue light. The images used for this study mainly look into wavelengths that are longer than those visible to the naked eye, but are still part of the colors we're able to see to finally come up with these images. These are then combined with data from Hubble and visible light is compared to accurately model up original light from the galaxy and to see how much they redden up by the foreground spiral. Furthermore, infrared lights. Let's take Arizona as an example. Its sun setting at the horizon seems redder because of the atmosphere's dust and because our atmosphere allows red light to travel better than blue light. This very same fact applies to Webb's images. The the telescope's infrared light takes note of the elliptical galaxy with highly visible images, despite passing through the dust of something like the foreground spiral. While this may be true, Winters says that almost all of this light is considered a false color and that we're not looking at blue or violet, but it's a near-infrared light that's been rendered visible to us. Webb's technology gives us better visualization of this dust that Hubble could not do. Its eight new infrared filters allow a much more accurate analysis while scientists map out deterioration by dust. The scientist further explained that comparing images from both telescopes shows us a lane of dust that we couldn't see before. It's the same kind that our solar system was made from. Not just that, but the dust is visible only because the galaxy in its background acts as a flashlight. Moreover, a rather unique alignment. While the image and data show us a very rare alignment of a spiral galaxy and elliptical in the background, researchers could also see something beyond it. They saw a strange looking arc-shaped object just behind the elliptical galaxy. The team was stunned, Winters claiming that they got so much more than what they bargained for by combining data from both telescopes. The newest data from Webb allowed them to trace light left over by the bright white galaxy through another spiral galaxy and find out more about one they didn't even hope to see. They submitted their paper to the Astrophysical Journal only recently, which further allowed an intern of ASU slash NASA space grant Jake Summers to start working for the ASU Cosmology Research Group as a member of the PEARLS team. It's truly astonishing how the telescope can be the basis for findings scientists would not expect at all, says Summers. It could find the lensed galaxy in the VV191 system, right behind the elliptical galaxy, with it hardly breaking a sweat, needing only half an hour of exposure time. Summers
Summers went on to talk about how its resolution never fails to amaze him, that he was completely blown away by its ability to resolve individual globular clusters in an entire galaxy. University of Alabama's William Keel is the lead author of this study, with Winterst, Seth Cohen, and Rolf Jansen from the School of Earth and Space Exploration acting as co-authors. Lastly, VV191, the galaxy pair VV191, has called many researchers' attention, especially those from citizen science group Galaxy Zoo. Keel has been part of this group for almost 15 years and was firstly taken into it for participants to point out new galaxy types, specifically overlapping galaxy systems or silhouetted ones. According to Keel, VV191 is the newest addition to a very small quantity of galaxies that help them compare galactic dust properties, and that it was chosen out of almost 2,000 similar superimposed galaxy pairs, chosen by the Galaxy Zoo science volunteers. The James Webb Space Telescope is the single most powerful space science observatory we've ever had. It came out in December of 2021. It's expected to solve even more mysteries in our solar system and be able to look even beyond distant worlds, around many stars. It could even probe into structures we don't understand yet, but it could also be able to give us more information about the origins of our universe and our place in it. Amazing views of the universe captured by Webb. Coming up, more nebulae. The telescope has also captured imagery of more incredible parts of the universe. The most loved out of these has to be the planetary nebula NGC 3132, famously known as the Southern Ring Nebula. It's almost 2,500 light years away from Earth. The main draw to it is that the ring visible to us is caused by leftover dust and gas expelled from the dying star in the middle of it. Webb has captured it in insane detail that has never been seen before. The galaxy has two stars in its center. The powerful infrared hardware part of Webb has allowed NASA to bring this second star into a much clearer view. An image of two stars so close together dying simultaneously would help scientists figure out the later stages of a star's life and how it affects the space around them. Though we've got to mention the Carina Nebula, one of the most impressive images the telescope has been able to muster up. The image was taken similarly in an area NASA has called NGC 3324. All the colors and shapes seen in the image are only gas, dust clouds, and a mass of endless radiation in the area. Scientists say that the mountains seen in it are over seven light years tall. Again, this would not have been possible without Webb's ability to look through these glasses and see objects beyond them, giving scientists much more data to play around with. Similarly, a clearer look at galaxies. The telescope manages to capture more than just just nebulae. Stefan's quintet was first discovered by Edward Stefan in 1877 and is a cluster of five galaxies. While this isn't the first time we're seeing something like this thanks to modern technology, it was a first at the time. Over centuries later, we can see it in more detail and light. The image itself is also remarkable since it was made from 1,000 images combined to make one with over 150 million pixels. With the help of Webb and other new technology, scientists can now see details in regions with millions of young stars and starburst regions at a scale never seen before. They can then use this same data to track how different galaxies interact with each other and evolve. Associate professor at Cosmic Dawn Center, based in the Niels Bohr Institute of the University of Denmark, Gabriel Brammer, crafted the images of NGC 628. The images made made using three sets of data at different wavelengths, giving us a composite view of the galaxy. Brammer further says that if our eyes could see mid-infrared wavelengths, even the night sky would be full of red, like in the picture. While some people may find that beautiful, it's a terrifying thought for most. Finally, a look into the oldest parts of space. Admittedly, the
telescope hasn't been active for that long, but it's managed to break records. Because of it, the team was able to look at the oldest galaxy we've come across. Famously known as Glass Z13, this galaxy is so old, it dates back to 300 million years after the Big Bang. Not just that, it's also been able to spot a so-called cartwheel galaxy, which, yes, does look like a cartwheel. The impressive region is located about 500 million light years away from our planet. While it may have a peculiar shape, scientists claim that's because it's the result of two galaxies colliding, and we're just seeing the result. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about these new images? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.